Welcome back to another video here on the Rake Trades YouTube channel. Today, I am not in my new fancy recording studio. However, we did just do an internal webinar with our Discord team, breaking down exactly what I'm watching this week, exactly how I'm preparing myself mentally to trade for the week, and some of my favorite charts out there. I promise you in this video, you are going to find a whole lot of value and insight into how I prepare overall coming into a brand new trading week. In addition to that, I do want to mention that applications for Mastermind 10.0 have officially opened. So if you are interested in working with me on a direct level, just check the description below for your chance to apply. With that being said, let's dive straight into the video. Just recording and we'll go ahead and get started. All right. So welcome, everybody. Uh, I hope you all have had a good weekend. I hope everybody was able to relax a little bit, kind of detach from what was definitely a very stressful trading week had some ups had some downs um closed for us with a couple of back-to-back -back up days but i definitely know that uh some people have been had a stressful week as a whole so i hope this weekend was helpful and able sorry this spider-man is on here and it's distracting me uh, I hope everybody was able to have sort of like a de-stressed moment, right? Able to relax a little bit, able to sort of unwind and uh, not let the market affect them too much, right? So that being said, in this video, what I want to do, or in this webinar, what I want to do is just briefly lay out some expectations for the week in terms of sort of what my overall thought process is for the market itself. And then a couple of names that I think could potentially be uh, appealing in trading individually. So First off, uh, the market itself is kind of in a unique spot here where um, we can go a variety of different directions based on the information that we have, right? So what we have on the weekly chart gives us a conflicting story across various different pieces of confluence, right? So the first thing that I want to note is that as of late, what we did is we took out this little swing high from here. Now, I don't use supply and demand zones, but I'm just using this block box to sort of reference to you this swing high, right? Now, what the market has had a theme of doing over the past several months has been taking out a swing high and then ultimately kind of failing that move, right? Some examples that you can look at are over here, over here, even as much as over here, right? So it's sort of like one, two, three, right? We've had three recent examples in the very recent past, and you could even consider this right here to be another one, where we've taken out a recent swing high on the weekly chart and then gotten some sort of broader reversal, right? which might not make traditional sense with what we know about market structure, but I think it makes a lot, a lot of sense in terms of trapping people and faking people out, right? Now, what we do have is that we spent a whole lot of time in the market. And again, I'm not somebody that uses support and, or supply and demand zones. It's not part of the reason, uh, not part of like the thesis that I trade. That being said, we spent a lot of time like in this box, right? If you go to the daily chart, it's going to even look more congested there. This 420 area on the SPY, 410 to 420 was a really congested area that we spent a lot of time at, right? So structurally speaking, for whatever the market's going to do next, whether it's going to pull back more than rally or just straight up rally or pull back and actually like maybe make a new low, whatever the case may be, it all starts with coming back to this 420 area. I think that's inevitable. Right now, that being said, I don't think it's going to be a clean path to it. Right, I don't think we're just going to have three straight weeks of red bars where we pull back into that. And even if we do, I think those three straight weeks of red are going to be very trappy, right? Very trappy on the daily chart, and that's what we saw last week. Right, last week we saw a very unique pullback that it, it, it kind of went in a straight line down and we didn't really move all that much at the end of the day at the end of the week we only moved like five dollars down in the spy from 438 to 433 so it wasn't really this big move but it was a really weird way of getting there we first had this little hammer type candle that got no action then we had a, day, a bar that looked like we were going to get continuation of the downside next day we had a reversal bar the next day we gapped under that reversal bar and didn't get continuation down 
So it was not very clean action. So the whole point of me saying this is that I think that whatever's to come next in the market, I don't think it's going to be super clean. And I do think that if we are to get clean action, it's going to take some time to develop, right? Like I think what ultimately would make sense here is another red bar this week that pulls back another week of action. Then we get another candle that pulls back. And then the next one gives some sort of hammer, right? That we have like some sort of, maybe it's not that big, but some sort of actionable trade off, right? Nonetheless, that's like several weeks of action. So I'm now of the mindset that the action that we're going to get over the next several weeks is going to continue this theme of not being all that fun. Now, what I think that we're going to see is pockets and zones in which of this action in which we have really fun action, right? So one pocket or zone within that, for example, would be something like a meta, right? Something like a meta on Friday, despite all the shit storm that the market had, it still has a relatively, relatively clean trend, right? So I think the theme of the next several weeks or month is going to be very hands off -y, kind of slow, very methodical trading. But that doesn't mean I think, don't think we're going to have really great opportunities. I think we're just going to have to be really picky on the ones that we do choose, right? I think on the ones that we do choose, I think we're going to have to be very selective about it. But the thing I kind of want to make clear to everybody is that what we had over the course of like, these three weeks pretty much where we had this straight line drive move up we only had a couple days of trappiness in there the rest of it was relatively clean and straightforward action up right i think what we're about to have is the opposite i think we're about to go through clean mostly choppy and unfavorable conditions with a few peak days here and there that kind of make up for everything that we really have to execute well on, right? So here's the mindset that I'm personally going to have now that I know that this is my theory and thesis as a whole, right? This could turn out not to be true. If that's the case, the chart will give us some sort of different structural layout that will give us like a daily buy or something that like we can trade. But until proven otherwise, I'm going to assume that the market's going to be not so fun, right? Which the last four days were not so fun. Right. So here are some things that I'm going to do to make sure that I manage my stress levels above all else. Right. Because at the end of the day, what can we do as traders to protect our mentals? Right. That's the first question we sort of have to ask ourselves. What can we as traders do in order to protect our mentals? And the reality is, as I mentioned this on Friday, you. You are in control of how stressful a trading day is, right? You, individually, you are the one who is in control of how stressful a trading day is. Even if I put out four trades that day, all losing signals, whatever the case may be, right? You are still in control of how stressful you make that. If you risk 1% of your account on each one of those trades, you end up minus 4%. That sucks, but that's survivable, right? Even if you risk 2% on each trade, that's a very tough day losing 8% of your account, but that's still survival, right? That's still overall survival, right? If you end up taking a day where you end up losing 25% of your account, at the end of the day, that's, or myself included, if I end up doing that, it's because we chose to make that trading day that stressful. We put on the risk that made that day stressful. Now, there might've been a variety of different factors that we put into it that made our decision that caused us to have that stress, right? But at the end of the day, we chose to make that stress sort of there. So what am I going to do in order to control my stress over the next several weeks during what I believe is going to be a stressful time? How to control stress my way, right? One is limited sizing on swings. This is important to me because I think swings have been tricky, right? Like you look at somebody like Duke's signals over the past week, right? Duke is somebody who's a swing trader. He's a swing analyst. What he does is he, he, his specialty is swing trades. He is a swing trader, right? For the last several days, trading days what what i saw happen to him and i don't normally even stock his stuff that much but like 
there was times where he would he he caught some really good trades but he was penalized by the market for swinging right like he swung meta and it ended up being like he had to hold through that first hour or two of tough action before it went profitable right so one of the things that i've noticed this week is that happened on several occasions right where swings would set up nicely and then not act the way you wanted them to act in the beginning. So I actually started to implement that last week in my trading. I don't think I swung very much, if at all, last week. I got to check back on that, but I don't think I swung anything. I think for me personally, I didn't. I chose to go no swings. And I think that ultimately that kind of saved me. And that was hard, gang. Like on Thursday, look at this daily candle that we see in the market here on Thursday. This looks like we're about to set a potential higher low and get a trend day on a Friday. Like it was really hard to not swing Thursday into Friday. And that ended up saving me because everything gapped down on Thursday. And it's not that those trades didn't end up working out profitable. It's that you did have to start from behind. So one of the most careful ways that I'm now going to go about this market is that until we get some sort of daily or weekly structure in place, like a daily high or low, which would be some sort of bar and a bar breaks above that previous bar's high, right? Some sort of structure in place that allows us to have some clarity in what's happening in the market. I'm going to go limited sizing on swings, if any, right? I think the second way that I want to implement this, and I did not do a great job of this last week, but it did help me out in some situations. I'd like to get away from the desk earlier in the day. And there's some of you who might be out there thinking like, Jake, that means you're going to be living less signals. I wish you would trade power hour. Less, more does not equal, more trading does not equal more money, my friends. I, and the thing is, if you've been trading for like a year, I don't even have to tell you this. You know, because you have gone through it so many times where you end up staying at the desk longer than you should taking an extra trade or two out of boredom and end up giving back everything you make. So I'm going to be in a hit and run mentality. And my goal is to be getting away from the desk earlier on in the day. If I find one good trade, like on Thursday last week, we hit meta 7.30 in the morning, we walked away, we called a day, we were done, right? I ended up did taking a little scalp here or there afterwards, I believe. And I don't want to do that going forward. I would like to be hit and run mentality. I'd like to make my money and fuck off for the day very early on because I don't want to get caught up in the stress of what the market is doing. And I don't want to be tempted to swing trade later in the day, right? I want to make sure that I try and follow that rule number one, right? Now, the third thing I'm going to be doing is going back to this two out of seven mentality a lot of you who have been here for a while are very familiar with the two out of seven mentality. I believe that out of the seven trading days on most weeks of the year, out of the seven trading days, out of every seven trading days, which I know is not one evil, you can even week, but just bear with me here. On every seven trading days, I believe there's like two tradable days with very like clean tradable action, right? I think that over the past course of the last month, we had this like strong push right where we were able to sort of capitalize on several days per week there was three or four back-to-back -back amazing trading days in a row i think that was great and we executed well during it now we kind of had last week was a good kind of slap in the face of reality it's like, all right you got to get back to your two out of seven right so what that means is not that doesn't mean that i'm only going to trade two out of seven days i have intentions of being here every day this week right maybe friday will depend on how we do monday through thursday but i have intentions of being every day but that doesn't mean i intend to put on risk every day I think that, and you'll be able to tell based on my sort of pre-market commentary and notes, am I excited about that trading day? Do I have a focus name or is this something where we're just trying to survive, right? Is it just a day where we're just trying to survive? And I think that I'm uh, of this week more than ever, I'm going to try and operate under that mentality, right? So uh, this week we have a full trading week, if I'm not mistaken, we have a full five-day trading week. Next week, I think is probably some sort of short week with 4th of July, Right. And next week's probably going to be a weird trading week because Monday's probably like a half day. Tuesday's probably a holiday, fully off for 4th of July. So next week, we're probably taking Monday fully off. And we're not, I'm not going to trade personally. I don't think anybody should. Um, and so next week's probably going to be like one of those funky, choppy weeks as well. So this week, our goal, I think, should be one, be present. Right. I think I'm going to show up every day, follow these three things that I've laid out. But even if you've been going through some stuff, here's the thing, my friends, you don't have to 
Just because you're at the desk present and ready and available each day doesn't mean you have to put on risk. One of the things that I used to do that was a really big impacting factor in my trading success was I would spend days at my desk where I had money in my account ready to trade and I would choose to like not put on trades. I would just sit there and not execute orders, right? I would just sit there and just, and, and just watch. So if you're somebody who's like, okay, let's say early in the week, as fucking hard as this will be, test your discipline. Let's say Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, you have a good solid few days of trading. You make $1,000. And that's a little bit more than you normally make on a trading week. You're really happy, whatever the case may be, right? Push yourself and challenge yourself to have a discipline test on Thursday, Friday, where the first hour you sit at the desk, you watch the charts, but you do not trade, right? I want you all, this would be a good week, I think, to implement that kind of stuff because I think next week, this next week is just naturally going to be a very low activity week. It's not my choice. The 4th of July happens to fall on a Tuesday. Monday's probably, I don't know for sure, but I think Monday's probably a half day of trading. I think that's the way they usually do it with 4th of July and a half day of trading but before a day off. I don't want anybody to be trading, right? So next week, you're going to naturally be away from the charts, right? So this week, whether you're actually there and trading the whole time, I want you all to sort of challenge yourself to maybe spend one day there watching, ready to trade, but choosing not to, right? And that the crazy part about that is you are going to see, you're going to have like 10 trade ideas that pop up into your head as that happens, right? As you do that. But ultimately, from those 10 trade ideas, some are going to fail, some are going to work, and you're going to learn a whole lot, right? So I definitely really encourage you all um, to try and do that discipline test, right? A discipline test. So in terms of names I'm watching for tomorrow, I scan through some stuff and like, uh, excuse me, there are some names that I think are appealing to me. That being said, I don't want to run through a list of them because we have no idea how stuff is going to open up tomorrow. Let's just see how it looks in the morning, right? I've never been a fan of scanning on Sundays because like by the time Monday market, Monday market open, we could have a gap up or a gap down that changes everything, right? But I will say there were some names that stood out to me like Shopify. I really like this daily bar where it looks like we're putting in a potential higher low here and over 64.53, we have clear skies up to 67. So Shopify is on pretty heavy watch for me. I thought there was a few other names that closed strong on Friday. Meta closed strong, although it feels a little bit like Chase right now, but we'll continue to upside scout. But Netflix had a really nice daily close compared to some other things. So there's a few names that are like standing out to me the long side. Etsy was one of the names that like looked pretty weak to me, right? And could be a potential downside type of trade. With this 